And so they honored one war, war veteran from the Second World War. Now, the reactions here have been remarkable, really. Uh, th there's a lot that can, that can be said about it because it really shows that the, these people have absolutely no idea what quote unquote Nazis are, or what national socialism was. Because, of course, Hollywood has created this fantasy image of national socialism as this just movement obsessed about Jews. Everything is about Jews, everything is about persecuting Jews, and so on. But that's a total fabrication in the post-war era. It's, it's created sort of after the fact, because in reality, the primary objective of the National Socialist Movement, and especially the Waffen-SS, was to fight against communism, was to fight against the uh, communist Soviet Union and the threat of the Soviet Union against Europe. That, that is why people joined the Waffen-SS, that is the primary objective when the National Socialist Movement was founded and so on. So, so I mean, th that is really what motivated people at the time. And also, it, it just shows enormous historical ignorance because there's, there's a difference, of course, between the SS and the Waffen-SS. There's a difference between the, shall we say, highly ideological uh, order of the SS in, in, in National Socialist Germany versus the Waffen SS of volunteers who were fighting against the uh, Soviet communist attack on Europe. And, and so th this claim that this man, uh, I mean, I, I don't know any, any, any details about this man, but that he was a, a Nazi. I mean, who, who says that he was ideologically motivated by national socialism? He volunteered to defend uh, his country, and like so many people did from all over Europe. And, and so my, 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 the point I'm trying to make here is that th this sort of Nazi trope that has been created by Hollywood is completely fake, and, and it's, this hysteria is completely out of proportion, and they don't really know what, what the whole purpose was of, for example, the, the Waffen-SS. Uh, and, and, and of course... Uh, Someone wrote a comment that you know the, the future is just uh, uh, liberals calling each other Nazis forever. <laughs> and that's sort of what we're well, anyone with even the most minimal knowledge of World War II should have known that honoring or even the idea of honoring someone who was in what he called the first Ukrainian division should have known that he was fighting against the Red Army during World War II and on the side yeah. of Germany. Again, Germany's allies in World War II were from a wide range of countries. They weren't yeah. Nazis. They were fighting for the independence and the freedom of their countries. And it included not only uh, people who joined the SS, but it included uh, Hungary, Romania, uh, uh, Slovakia, uh, Finland was an important ally of, Ger of Germany during the Second World War, and it was a parliamentary democracy. But they were fighting with the Germans, as the Finns and said, they were brothers in arms of Hitler's Germany. Hitler, in fact, visited uh, Ger uh, Finland in 1942 to honor uh, the commander in chief of the Finnish forces, uh, General Mannerheim, Commander Mannerheim, uh, because they didn't want to be part of the Soviet Union. And when the uh, Germans set up a Ukrainian SS division, the first one in 1943, they got far, far more applications and volunteers than they could even handle. Eventually, there were two Ukrainian divisions in the SS, but they had SS divisions of many other nationalities as well. But the Ukrainians, overwhelmingly, I mean, this is an important point, they had a choice. They could go either with Germany and its allies or with the Soviet Union. And there was hardly any Ukrainians making who had that choice who would decide we want to be with the Soviet Union, considering how oppressive, how harsh, how brutal Soviet rule had been, particularly in Ukraine. And the idealism that many young Ukrainians showed by volunteering for the SS wasn't because they cared about Jews. It was because they wanted their country to be free from Bolshevism, from communism. And the yeah. Germans, in fact, encouraged the Ukrainians to develop their own uh, sense of nationality and so forth. That's a whole other issue. But again, the, the, the uh, 
and also another thing that just irritates me is these people that claim to be so concerned about Ukrainian independence, uh, this is just incredible hypocrisy by the United States and Canada, because during World War II, not only did America not care about Ukrainian independence, they didn't care about the independence of all these countries, and they were allies of the Soviet Union, for heaven's yeah. sakes. I mean, <laughs> during World War II, Stalin was considered a good re- ruler for Ukraine. Well, no, people in Ukraine or Estonia or Latvia or other uh, parts of the Soviet Union certainly didn't think Stalin was any great guy. Uh, he had brought terrible uh, death, destruction. Uh, the Holodomor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is just, it's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I don't want to go into great detail right now about World War II, but... Uh, if if this if they're embarrassed about honoring this man, they have to be because to to honor people who volunteered for the SS in World War II or fought against the Red Army, uh, to honor them is to say that the role of the United States in World War II was a big mistake because yeah. the United States was allied with the Soviet. It was the most important <laughs> military ally of the United States in all of American history. They supported but, the Soviet Union, and the Soviet it, Union was attacking Ukraine and, and all the other countries. I mean, this so is it, it, complete it, insanity. It, well, I mean, in 1939, when the Soviet <laughs> Union attacked Finland, uh, the United States, and of course, world opinion was very much pro-Finnish, uh, the Soviet Union was thrown out of the of the League of Nations for attacking Finland. Uh, but then uh, in December 1941, the British declared war on Finland because Stalin wanted him to. So they went along with that. And the United States, of course, during World War II, didn't raise a, a single voice for any concern for the Ukrainians or Estonians, the Latvians, and you know, all these other people. Anyway, my point is not only just the ignorance, but the, but the amnesia, the, the myopia, the, the uh, inability to even remember even the most basic points about 20th century history is a hallmark today of, you might say, these society, American style politicians, democracy and society, which instead sees World War II and everything else from this uh, through this Jewish lens, through this Jewish perspective. And of course, that's not how people thought at the time, including Americans. Nobody in America thought they were fighting in World War II for, for Jews, for heaven's sakes. But now that's become a, a centerpiece, a primary focus in how we look not only at World War II, but everything related in international affairs, as we see now, even with this uh, uh, war in Ukraine involving Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, and here's another article just uh, uh, giving an example of the extreme uh, sort of hyperbole, the hysteria, the sort of ridiculous nature of the reaction to this man. Uh, He was 19 years old or something like that. He was a teenager basically volunteering to defend his country in World War II. And, and here's one article saying that Poland's education minister says he has taken steps to extradite Jaroslav Unka. So this is like they're now engaging in some sort of Simon Wiesenthal persecution of this man simply for him defending his country. And, and again, I mean, I'm baffled by by the, the foolishness, the sort of ridiculous nature of, of, of all the... Uh, I saw Ezra Levant and all these sort of conservative, quote unquote, conservative, fake conservative people who now pounce on this uh, to to make a big deal out of it, to make a big show out of it. Uh, That's all we need. But the point is, this was a kind of outpouring. Again, some people will say, well, uh, there were more Ukrainians that fought in the Red Army than the fought in the uh, SS. That's true. But the big difference is those who fought with the SS were volunteers. Those who fought in the Red (laughs) Army were conscripted. They had no choice. In fact, if they even, uh, I mean, even the slightest uh, deviation was was met by being shot, for heaven's sakes. And of course, uh, many Soviet Union, uh, Soviet units even went over to the Germans. I mean, this was a a, a, a very, very common thing, especially in the first year of the war. But again, uh, to to look at this, this aspect, just this chapter of World War II, is to call into question the whole uh, foundation, the whole pretense for America's entire alliance system during World War II, which was with the Soviet Union as uh, foremost, and of course with the British, which is the British Empire. Again, it makes a mockery of these claims that America was fighting for 
independence and freedom when its most important allies were not only that was the Soviet Union, but the British Empire, which held hundreds, it was the largest empire in world history, holding hundreds of millions of people in, 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 under British rule against their will. But anyway, that's a larger point to get out of World War II. And again, they, they tie themselves into knots dealing with modern history because they don't know anything. Of, these politicians obviously don't know anything about history. And so who do they go for guidance and who do they pay attention to? Groups like the Simon Wiesenthal Center, the U.S. Holocaust yeah. Memorial Council. That's going to be the go to <laughs> institutions if you want to know about 20th century history in American and Canadian society at the begin at this in this era of the 21st century. Absolutely. And I, just one final comment about this. This is also sort of paralleled by uh, uh, some of the some of the the comments, sort of ridiculous comments that I hear about uh, that I hear online and so on about the the, the current war in in Ukraine, that the U Ukrainians somehow uh, align themselves with NATO or America for ideological reasons. No, I mean it, if if bombs are falling on your country, what are you going to do? Are you going to be picky who you accept uh, military aid from? No, you're not. And it's the same thing in the Second World War. It's not for ideological reasons that people joined the Waffen-SS. It was to defend their country's independence. 